This is Marie of Creations Photography and Design. Today I'm talking to you about adding edges for a canvas wrap. And as you can see, I'm a big fan of canvas. This particular one is 40 inches by 60 inches. This one over here, which happens to be framed, is 11 by 22. I have them all over my house, and the bigger the better. This is West Union Covered Bridge in Park County, Indiana. Let's get started on this. Here's an image that we'd like to change into a canvas. One of the things that I have to tell you, you have to be completely optimized first. Have it all ready for printing before you mess around with getting it ready for canvas. I have a 13 inch printer, so I print two sizes here at home the finished size of 11 by 14 and the finished size of 11 by 22. The reason I do that is yeah, I only have to buy two different sizes of stretcher or three different sizes of stretcher bars and it's just it works for me. It's standardized. One of the things you have to think about when you're going to do a canvas is whether you're going to print it yourself. If you print it yourself you can buy a canvas printing uh, material on a roll. So if your printer supports roll printing, it's excellent. Or you can send it out someplace and have it printed. Like I said, I print 11 by 14s and 11 by 22s here at home, and my stretcher bars are 3 quarters of an inch deep. That means I have to add an inch on all four sides to get me that stretch room. So if I'm printing an 11 by 14, my canvas size is actually 13 by 16. And if I'm printing an 11 by, by 22, it's 13 by 24. So I have that room to wrap over the stretcher bars. If you're having it printed out someplace, you have to know, first of all, what resolution they want this in for canvas printing, what size stretcher bars. I have my bigger pictures printed at what used to be Simply Canvas. It's now simplycolor.com. They provide templates for me in the proper size. So if I size up my picture using the resolution that they recommend, which for canvas is 100 dots per inch, if I have my image sized correctly or very close to it, I can overlay this template on it and see how much is going to be wrapped and how much is going to be showing. So let's do that the first thing. This is a panorama picture. So I need to first make sure it's going to fit into my 11 by 22 or my 13 by 24 inch slot. If you look at the rulers here, it looks to be, oh, about 7 by 12. <laughs> that won't fit my stretcher bars. So let's go to image, image size, and set this at inches. The width is going to be 24. Oh, and that makes the height 13. And if I turn, let's let's try something. Let me cancel this and show you image size. I'm going to turn off resample for a second, and I'm going to change my resolution to 100. And look at how that resizes my width and height. So that's really interesting how much more size I can get between 100 and 240. So that's how I would start out. But I am going to click the resample on and I'm going to change all of these. I'm going to change my width to 24. My height will go to 13 and my resolution will go to 100. So I'll say OK. Now in this case, 
I made the picture as big as the canvas. Now I'm going to turn on my rulers and you can get your rulers by view rulers or Control or Command R. Now I know that I need an inch on every side so I want to see what this would look like if I use the canvas itself as the wrap. Grab my move tool, pull down a ruler, and go in an inch from the top. Oops. We have to crop this because it was too long. So let's grab our crop tool. And I'm going to drag that other one down. I need this to be at 13. I want this to be 13 inches wide. So I'm going to and this time I want to delete the crop pixels. I ordinarily don't, but for later on in this particular video I'll need it cropped. So I'll say delete crop pixels. And then I'll just crop it up to that 13 inch line and complete my transformation. Okay, now I grab my move tool again and I can move this 13 inch line up to 12 inches. And we'll do the same on the sides We'll move it an inch from the edge. Now in this particular image, I have enough image that I could wrap the image itself over without losing any of the important parts of it. I still have the bridge on the diagonal and I still have the, the old bridge and the new bridge heading back into the background. I've got all these lovely clouds and trees. The only thing I'm really cropping off is some trees on either side that ditch in the front of it and a little bit of sky. So this particular image has enough room that I wouldn't have to add canvas. But not all images do. So let's go back to the beginning. And look at that image size again. And I'm going to go ahead and image size. And this time we're going to say it's 11 well, excuse me, I don't want that would be 22 here. Ooh. And it's still a little big. So, and I'll go ahead and change the resolution to 100 and say OK. We're going to need to crop that, so I'm going to bring this out to the 11 inch mark. Grab my crop tool and pull this up. Because of the demonstration, not in real life, but because of this demonstration, I'll go ahead and delete the crop pixels and say OK. I'm going to grab the crop tool again. Well, I'll just let this, I'll let this be. I'll have to remember to change it next time. OK, back to the move tool back to the move tool. Sometimes it doesn't listen to me. Now what I'm going to need to do now is I'm going to clear the guides for a second. We need to add canvas to this this time. So I'm going to make a layer below this by holding down my con command or control key when I hit the new layer button. And then I'm going to go to Image, Canvas Size, check the Relative button, and add 2 to the top, 2 to the bot, or 2 to the width, 2 to the height, and make sure that I have the image centered. So when I say OK, I get canvas evenly all the way around the outside. Now, one thing that I could do that works pretty good much of the time, not every time, is try put a gradient on this. So I'm going to sample some colors here, and I'm going to sample the green down here at the bottom, and then I'm going to flip that over, and I'm going to sample the blue here at the sky. I'm going to grab my gradient tool by tapping G, and I want a foreground background gradient. I'm going to start at the top, Hold down my shift key to keep it straight and drag to the bottom. And we have a nice gradient all the way around it. This one works really nicely with the gradient 
it starts out the same color as the sky and ends up the same color as the edges and as this green is changing into blue along the side so are the trees changing into sky so this works really well we could add a solid color gradient and I'll show you what they look like let's try the blue and to fill with a foreground color it's alt backspace option delete well it looks good with the sky but not with the ground so let's fill it with a background color and see if this helps and to fill with a background color I have command delete or control backspace well that's a little better but I still don't like it at the sky area so for this particular image and a solid fill to wrap the edges on I think the gradient works not everyone will but try it first to see what you can get so there's one option is just a solid fill behind it let's look at some other ones one of the other options is a mirror option so let's go back to this original image layer and pull out our guides this time we want it one inch from the edge of the image and two inches from the edge of the canvas because that's the size we're going to have to cover with our mirror is one inch Okay, I'll grab my rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to zoom in Commander Control Plus so I can see where I'm at. I am going to start right on that guideline and move out to the edge of the image. I don't really want to move beyond it. And there I go. Now I want to jump this to a new layer or copy it to a new layer if you want to say that. And the keyboard shortcut for the map for that is Command or Control J. Alright. I'll go ahead and transform this while I'm on that layer. Transform Control or Command T. And I'm going to take the center box on the image and just drag it to the edge of the canvas. Ooh, my computer's running just a little slow with my recording program on. And then I'll go ahead and complete the transformation. And we have our mirror image. We can do that all the way around start on that guideline and get now this time I'm going to go beyond the image and shows you show you what happens so I'm going to jump that to its new layer transform it okay come on oh duh Let's undo that. Oh, we have to take this transformation off. Throw that layer away. And actually, throw that layer away. And actually get back down to the layer that the image is on to make our selection. Because when we select transparent, you don't get very much. And again, I'm going to try and show you what happens if you select a little too much. It's fixable, but annoying. All right, so we jumped that to a new layer. Uh, let's transform that and go over to the middle here and grab the inside handle and drag it down to the edge and say OK. Well, now last time I did this, I had a little piece of white that I had to deal with. And I used my arrow keys and my move tool to nudge it back up. Okay, back down to the original layer. Let's make our selection with a marquee tool. Control 
controller command J, controller command T. Take the inside handle to the edge of that canvas. There we go. The last selection, we're going back down. I'm selecting right to the edge on these simply because with all these layers showing I can't tell where the canvas ends. And let's see, this one I got a little too far inside the guideline, so I haven't let up on my mouse key yet. I'm going to hold my space bar, and this lets me move this whole thing up just a little bit. Now, jump to a new layer, transform, grab the inside handle, move it to the outside. and complete the transformation. Now this one we've got a little line in it, so I am going to grab my move tool and take my arrow key and nudge it down. One, one arrow bump was enough. Now we'll look at the whole thing. Now if you're really sure, oh dear, this isn't quite enough, so I'll just transform it again and pull it out just a little bit further. There you go. Now there's a couple of things we can do here. We could put that gradient back in, and those corners look great. Or we could add a new layer at the top of the layer stack and grab our healing brush and just brush over that area and see what happens. Oh, not going to work very well. So, let's change that healing brush to a patch tool, and we'll draw around this empty area, and drag it over to an area that should be a similar color and texture. Ah, oh, that worked for us. Do the same thing on this corner. The trick on this is to make sure that in the options bar you have sample all layers checked. If you don't, it won't work so well. You always try the easy tool first, which would have been the um, healing brush. Then you go for something more simple, uh, more complex, like the patch tool. That patch wasn't very good, so I'm going to patch that a little closer to home. There we go. If that hadn't worked, I'd have tried my clone stamp tool. But usually, if you have this stamp little layers going, which works in CS6 and, and Photoshop CC, now, let's put all these layers into a group. This top layer is already selected, and then I'm going to shift-click on this bottom edge layer, and shift-click on the folder, and it all puts them in a group, and I'm going to call this the mirror edge. Okay, turn that off, turn off, turn that the eyeball off, turn the eyeball all off on background and make sure our layer is selected. This time when I go to the selection tool I'm going to select the single row marquee tool and I'm going to zoom in to where I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to get very near the edge and click once and it makes a selection one pixel wide. Cool. Well, let's jump that one pixel to a new layer. Then I'm going to transform that pixel, uh, that new selection, Command or Control T. And I need to come over here to the center. I need to find the center. Here it is, right here. And I'm going to drag that out. Boom. Looks decent in the sky, 
Alright, now I'm going to zoom back in again. And this time I'm going to select near the bottom. If you select right on the edge, you won't get anything. So you have to be a little bit inside the image. And make sure I am on that image layer. Commander Control J to jump it to its own layer. Commander Control T. Stretch it out. Complete the transformation. All right. Now let's go over to here. Back down to the layer. Now we need to change our tool to the single column marquee tool. And right close to the edge. Jump it to a new layer. Transform it. Pull it out. Now we're getting to a point I don't particularly care for it. Some images look really great stretched. Others not so much. And I, whoops, we forgot to go back down here. So let's now jump it to a new layer and transform it and stretch it out. Others not so much and I think this is one of the not so much ones. And again we could use that same trick. We could add a new layer here at the top. Choose the spot healing brush, sample all layers. Now you see on this one it's working really well. Don't ask me why, but it does. Actually this one not so much. I'll start in a different direction. Eh, it'll be good enough for the government work. And I'm also going to go up here. This to me is distracting, so I'll get rid of that. Alright, so let's put these in their own group by selecting them all and call this a stretch edge. So you see we've got three choices that we can do. We can try a solid color background or a gradient background. This to me is very, let's, let's get rid of these. Um, this, this to me looks very nice on this image. It doesn't work for all images. Sometimes a solid color works, sometimes neither of them work. Uh, let's get rid of the guidelines here by View, Hide Guides. Oh, let's just clear them. Or we could add that stretched edge, which looks good on some images, not all. And we could do the mirror image, which what the original forum question was about. Now on these mirror images, I might go back and get rid of this. It looks really odd, but that's up to the artist. Remember how much canvas we add depends on what the depth of our stretcher bars are. If you've got a three quarter inch stretcher bar, you'll need to add at least an inch. And if you're stretching your own, an inch and a half is even better. If you send them out, find out what your printer wants, how much extra they say to add for an inch and a half stretcher bar. You know, do they say add two inches? Do they say add two and a half? Do they say add three inches? And all of that will determine how you're going to add canvas or size your image. Because remember, this one has enough information that isn't adding to it around the side that we could actually resize this and use the image itself to wrap. So that should always be your first option, is try and, and use the image itself. If, if you can, if after you've cropped out, you know, made room for those, the wrap, that you still have a good image. So always talk to your printer first, find out what resolution they want, find out 
what size they recommend that you add for the stretcher bars and any other information that you need. Simply color, Simply Color Lab wants the images full size, including the wrap, at 100 pixels per inch. So for a 40 by 60 inch photo, I will need to have a 44 by 66 inch canvas filled with pixels. And then I upload it to them and they send me back several days later a beautiful canvas to hang on my wall. So I hope this has helped. You all have a good day.